This story is called The Ghosts and the Game of Football. Long ago in the north of Ireland, a young man set out to seek his fortune. After a long day of tramping, he came to a farm cottage next to a ruined castle. He knocked, and when the farmer came to the door, the young man asked for a night's lodging. I'll do better than that, said the farmer. If you'll stay in the ruined castle tonight and you're alive in the morning, I'll give you half my lands and my daughter's hand in marriage. And he stepped back to gesture to the handsome young woman who was putting food on the table in the room beyond. Well, now, why wouldn't I be alive in the morning? Asked the young man, unless you were to send someone to kill me. Oh no, I wouldn't do that, said the farmer. It's just that since my father died last year, the castle has been haunted. And all who have tried to break the spell have either run away or died of fright. Well, I'll give it a try, said the young man. So after dinner, the farmer and his daughter settled the young man in the great hall of the ruined castle with a blazing fire and a full jug on the table. After they left, the young man set himself down at the table and out of a pocket, he pulled a prayer book. He said to himself, I think this book will do me more good than that jug. He began to read, but after only a few minutes, up above he heard thump, bump, bump, and a voice cried, I'll fall, I'll fall. Well, fall away, cried the young man, and down through a hole in the ceiling came a pair of legs in knee breeches and shoes with silver buckles. The legs walked themselves across the floor to the fireplace where they stood as though they were warming themselves. Well, the young man went back to his book. After a few minutes, he heard again, bump, 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 and the cry, I'll fall, I'll fall. Come ahead, called the young man, and down through the hole in the ceiling came a torso in a cutaway coat. The torso bumped along the floor until it came to the legs, where it jumped up and joined itself at the waist with the legs. Well, the young man turned another page. After a few minutes, again, he heard from up above, bump, bump, bump. And the voice cried, I'll fall, I'll fall. Well, do it then, called the young man. And down through the hole in the ceiling came a head in a low three-corner hat. The head rolled along the floor until it came to the rest of the body where it jumped up and joined itself to the body at the neck. There stood an elderly gentleman. In the next few minutes, two more sets of body parts fell through the hole in the ceiling and joined themselves into the bodies of gentlemen, even more elderly and out of style as the last. The older of the three wore shoes with turned down tongues, a pleated coat, and a high three-corner hat. The oldest gentleman wore high-heeled shoes a full skirted coat and a hat with a wide brim and a bobbing feather. The three gentlemen stood at the fireplace 
and doffed their hats and bowed to the young man. And then from somewhere, one of them produced a puckeen, a football, what we would call a soccer ball. They dropped it to the floor and began dribbling it among themselves back and forth, up and down the great hall. Well, the young man put down his prayer book and walked toward the oldest of the gentlemen, the one in the feathered hat. He said, fair play is bonny play, so I will help you. And so the young man and the oldest gentleman played against the other two. After about an hour of lively play, they all stopped to rest. The young man wiped the sweat from his forehead and realized that the elderly gentlemen were looking at him as though they hoped that he would speak. Well now, he said, this has been a fine game, but I think that you might want my help in finding a different kind of rest. Yes, said the youngest of the three gentlemen. We have had some people stay the night, but no one has ever spoken to us. I am the father of the farmer in the cottage next door. And this is my father. And he indicated the gentleman in the high three-corner hat. And this is my grandfather. And he gestured to the gentleman wearing the feathered hat. In life, we all valued money far too much. From somewhere, he pulled out a great chest and opened it. It was filled with coins and bills. From a pocket in his coat, he pulled out a sheaf of papers. This is the money we collected in our lives. And this is a list of those we wronged to collect it. If you will help my son in the cottage next door, return this money, then perhaps you may come back some night and see whether we might be at peace. Now the young man realized that he was beginning to be able to see the wall through the bodies of the elderly gentlemen. And then suddenly they were gone. The night was over when the farmer and his daughter came to check on the young man, they were delighted to find him still alive. The young man helped the, fa the farmer load the chest of money into a cart. And for the next three days, they crisscrossed the county, returning the money to its rightful owners. And when the chest was empty, and the names on the list had all been checked off. The young man returned to the ruined castle. He sat at the table and he rested his head on his arms and was asleep in no time. He dreamt that he saw three white birds perched on the tower of the castle. And then he saw them take off and disappear into the blue sky. The young man received half the lands of the farmer and he married the farmer's daughter. They restored the castle and lived together happily for many years. When the farmer died, the young man took over the management of the entire state, estate and with great success. But if ever he were tempted to hoard up money, he had only to think of those three elderly ghosts and the game of football 